In this module, we will look at the acceleration analysis of the four bar mechanism. The acceleration analysis problem is stated as follows. Given the link lengths of the mechanism, the angles theta 2, theta 3, and theta 4, that's the position of the mechanism, the input angular velocity omega 2, omega 3, and omega 4, and the input angular acceleration alpha 2, we have to find the accelerations alpha 3 and alpha 4. Alpha 3 is the angular acceleration of the coupler and alpha 4 is the angular acceleration of the output link or the link 4. Note that in the problem statement it is implicit that to do the acceleration analysis you have to first do the position analysis or you have to know the angles theta 2, theta 3 and theta 4 and you also have to do the velocity analysis that you have to know the angular velocities omega 2, omega 3 and omega 4 of each one of the links. The steps in performing acceleration analysis or computing alpha 3 and alpha 4 are analogous to the steps we took for velocity analysis. Here we have to first start with the loop closure equation at the velocity level which is shown here and which we had derived in the previous module. Since the left hand side has to be equal to zero for all time as the mechanism moves, the time derivative of the left hand side is also zero. And if I take the time derivative for each one of these terms here, what I obtain is a fairly complicated equation which is shown here. This equation looks complicated, but there is a pattern here. The first term here is obtained by taking the time derivative of this expression here. The second term is obtained by taking the time derivative of this expression. And the third term is obtained by taking the time derivative of this expression here. Now taking the time derivatives of these expressions here has been covered in the first module. I will not repeat the mathematical steps here but I will talk in a little bit more detail about the meaning of each one of these terms. So the first term here is the tangential acceleration of the point A with respect to O2. And the second term here is the centripetal acceleration of the point A. So these two terms together gives me the acceleration of point A. Similarly, this term is the acceleration of point B with respect to point A, with the first term here being the tangential acceleration and the second term here being the centripetal acceleration. This third term gives the acceleration of point B with respect to O4 or with respect to O2 because O4 is fixed with respect to O2. Again, this term here denotes the tangential acceleration of B and this term here denotes the centripetal acceleration of B. So what this equation represents is the loop closure equation at the acceleration level. The first two terms gives me the acceleration of point B which I have obtained going in this direction and this term also gives me the acceleration of point B which I obtain going in this direction and they have to be equal because we are talking about the same point B. To simplify this equation we will use Euler's formula to expand all the exponentials and then carry out the algebra. So by using Euler's formula, multiplying throughout and by substituting j squared equal to minus 1, we will get this expression. This is fairly complicated, but there is essentially two algebraic steps that we are doing in order to get this expression. And I will discuss these two steps below. First will have terms of the form alpha i j to the power of j theta i and we have to simplify these terms where i is 2, 3 or 4. So alpha i j e to the power of j theta i is alpha i times j cos theta i plus j sin theta i which gives me alpha i times j cos theta i plus j square sine theta i. Now j square is minus 1, so I can replace this by 
j cos theta i minus sin theta i. Now if you use i equal to 2, you get this term here. i equal to 3 gives you this term here and i equal to 4 gives you this term here. The second general form that we have is omega i square e to the power of j theta i. And this we can simply see by expanding is cos theta i plus j sin theta i. If I put i equal to 2, I get this term here. If I put i equal to 3, I get this term here. And if I put i equal to 4, I get this term here. So this was the equation that we had. If we equate the real and the imaginary parts to zero, these are the two equations that we obtain. And again, they look fairly complicated, but as you will see, they're actually pretty simple. So let's first look at how these two equations come. The first equation comes from the real part, and the second equation comes from the imaginary part. From the tangential acceleration terms, the terms corresponding to sine theta or these terms are real. From the centripetal acceleration terms, the terms corresponding to cos or these terms are real. So if I just collect these terms and write them down, I get the first equation. Obtaining the second equation is analogous, where I take all the terms that are multiplied by j, which is shown here, and then write them down. Now again, this equation looks fairly complicated. However, if you identify the unknowns in this equation, you will see that the unknowns are alpha 3 and alpha 4. Alpha 3 and alpha 4. Everything else, all these square terms, sine theta, cos theta terms, they are constants. Because we know omega 2, omega 3, omega 4, we know theta 2, theta 3, theta 4. So what we essentially have is a system of two linear equations in two unknowns, which I can write in this form where this a, b, c are the coefficients shown here. It's a standard exercise to solve two equations in two unknowns, and the solution you will get is of the following form. If you note here carefully, the problem of divide by zero when we had theta three equal to theta four in the velocity kinematics case, it is still present in this case. Now AE minus BD is equal to BC sine theta 4 cos theta 3 minus sine theta 3 cos theta 4, which is the same as BC times sine theta 4 minus theta 3. So when theta 4 equal to theta 3, Again, you cannot compute the angular accelerations alpha 3 and alpha 4. Now, one high-level message that I want you to take away from this velocity and acceleration analysis is that in differential kinematics or in velocity and acceleration analysis, we are solving linear equations to compute the unknowns. Whereas in position analysis, we had to solve a system of nonlinear equations to compute the unknowns. This fact that the differential kinematics is linear but the position kinematics is nonlinear is a feature of all mechanism and robot analysis problems. Although we will not exploit this fact in this class, this is very useful in general. And if you pursue further studies in mechanism analysis and robotics, this will be a useful nugget of information to remember.